honesty. I am an ex-convict. I served 18 of my 22 years of incarceration at McNeil Island right over there. Through circumstances and situations, I end up uh, killing a man and I end up in prison. By God's grace, I got caught. I lived a life full of sin and crime um, from a real young age. I mean, I looked around and I seen Jesus people and I didn't, I didn't think that I was one of them, you know, because my, the things in my life didn't match the things that went on in Jesus people's lives. My church was found in the bottle and on a pipe or in a needle and playing music. Uh, you know, my gods were, you know, self-imposed gods or the gods of rock and roll. Um, you know, and in my own self, I was my god. You know, I hear guys say that Satan does this and does that. No, I do. I'm the problem. I was my worst enemy. Anybody who knows addictions, we become total liars in who we are. We'll lie, cheat, steal, because we're going to get high. I'm going to get my drug, period. I don't care who I hurt. I don't care what I do. I'm going to do this. And so I destroyed a uh, family, uh, and not just my family. There's so many others involved in that. I was the sort of person that always did well in school and everything. I even ended up going to graduate school in economics. But I had developed this hidden life of sin. So uh, when I was arrested, it was a great shock to everyone, except me. It was like a great fall. Um, before I got arrested, there were some things that God spoke to me you know, through circumstances, and I wouldn't listen. But I, I sort of knew that I was on a bad path that was going to lead to disaster. I spent some time thinking, how could I lie my way out of this? But I was totally cornered. I wanted to be a pro athlete. Without the proper guidance, I, uh, I fell for, uh, for the limelight. I just worked harder and harder and harder and harder. And it, it just didn't happen. And with that, I just got frustrated. And with the frustration came a lot of anger, animosity. And when I finally got into a serious relationship, I didn't know how to handle it. I knew I was facing a, a charge for sexual assault. I was gonna be doing time. I had no idea what the plan was. At that point in my life, I just started reading God's word more and more. I grew up in a bad home, joined the military, became a Marine. I didn't realize at the time that uh, I was just running away from, from God and, uh, and all my problems, and not knowing that all the problems were still in me. I was very mad and upset at, at God for all the things, all the bad things that happened in my life. Uh, I did 12 and a half years in the Marine Corps, but I did 16 years in McNeil Island, and I knew I was gonna end up there. But uh, I, didn't, I refused to listen. But, but God, who he is, was uh, a lot bigger than me. And he put me to a place where I couldn't run anymore. And I had to accept that uh, I was going to be uh, a part of something bigger than I ever knew. <laughs> I, I always tell people on the outside that the whole first step of evangelism is done for you. When you're sitting in prison, you've got to admit your method of living isn't working. So you don't have to convince somebody that they need to reevaluate what's going on. They already figured that one out. And so it's just opening other doors uh, for them. The only hope they have is God. Uh, society have written, has written them off. They, for a large part, have written themselves off. Um, and then once God gets in there and begins working, changing from the inside out, he's got them. Oh, he set me free. He set me free inside.